I'm standing here in Mount Hope Cemetery, and I want to introduce you to a few people. I'm standing here next to the gravestone of Jason Scott Paul. He was born in August of 1990, and he died July 13th, 1991. This is the gravestone of the Dobneys. Emma was born in 1825 and died in 1905. Her husband, we presume, was born in 1827 and died in 1909. These are the halls, both in the army. William died in 1913, he was 95 years old. And Dorothea, his wife, died in 1907. She lived to the age of 90 years. This is George Sprague. He died in 1972. He was only 26 years old. And finally, Edward Foreman. He died in January of 1953 at the age of 54. Now, inside of your programs, there's a sheet that has a picture of all these gravestones that we've looked at. I want to invite you to pull that out. And here's the assignment that I want to give you. I'd like you to compare all of those gravestones and see what they have in common. There is one thing that is true of all of these. So take a minute, talk to people around you, try to figure out what is similar with all of these gravestones. It's more than just that they're dead or that they're in Rochester. There's something that they all have in common. See if you can figure it out. I'm going to give you a minute to do so. Well, did you figure it out? Do you see what they all have in common? No matter what year they died or how old they were when they died, here's what is true of all of them. All of them have been dead longer than they ever lived. The infant who died at the age of one died 19 years ago. Emma Dobney, she was 80 years old and died 104 years ago. Her husband Thomas was 82 years old and he died 90 years ago. Our army couple, the Halls, Will died at the age of 95, and that was 96 years ago. His wife, Dorothea, died at the age of 90, and that was 102 years ago. George Sprague, he died at the age of 26, 37 years ago. And Edward died 56 years ago. He was the age of 54. All of them have been dead longer than they ever lived. And here's what's true of all of us. Everyone seeing this video, unless Christ returns first, all of us will die. And there's a second thing that's true. Unless Christ comes back, all of us eventually will have been dead longer than we ever lived in this life. And when you think about the whole scope of human history, that's not that far away. So here's what I wonder. When that day comes for you, when you will have been dead longer than you ever lived, how many people will know anything about you? Look at it this way. How much do you know about your great-grandparents? You might know their ancestry or where they came from, where they immigrated from. You probably don't even know their names. Here's the reality. Whatever you know about your great-grandparents, that's probably about the amount of information your great-grandchildren will know about you. This cemetery is filled with abandoned tombstones and it's just a, a stark reminder of the eventual anonymity of all of our lives here in this world. I don't know if thinking about that and hearing that makes you discouraged or despondent. It really shouldn't. There are two truths that all of us should be reminded of. 
One is that if you're seeing this, you're alive. Your legacy isn't set in stone yet, I guess you could say. And all of these people, most of the people in this cemetery have probably been dead longer than they ever were alive. The day will come when that's true of you. But you're alive now. Your legacy has not yet been set. A second truth that all of us need to be reminded of is that this life is not all there is. There is life after death. If this life was all that there is, well, I think that would make all of us despondent. But the reality is there is life after death. There's a statement that I have made at every funeral I've done for the past 10 years. And, and if I do your funeral, I'll say it at yours. The statement is this. People believe that we are in the land of the living headed to the land of the dying. But that's just not true. We are in the land of the dying headed to the land of the living. Today we're going to be studying eight different rulers of the most important nation in the history of the world. And we're going to consider their legacy and our own. You see, when God gave a summary of each of these kings, he gave a summary statement of their lives and of their rule. And I want us to consider, if God were to write a one-statement summary of our lives, what would he say? There's a couple of sobering realities about your death and your funeral. One is this, that probably the biggest varying factor as to how many people will attend your funeral is what the weather is like that day. The second sobering reality is this, that within an hour of the final prayer at your funeral, there'll be a bunch of people sitting around a room eating quarter cut tuna sandwiches and potato salad talking about you. And each of them will probably make a statement that to them summarized your life. And here's what I wonder. If those people told the truth, what would they say? Would they say, what a jerk he was? Would they say, I wonder how much money he left? Or maybe they'd say, she really loved God and changed my life. You see, the final lasting physical reminder of your life is probably going to be a tombstone on which your name will appear that eventually no one will visit. So today we want to ask the important question. What's your legacy? What's the summary of your life? If God were making one statement to summarize you, what would he say?